I now call Arlene Foster. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And first of all, on behalf of the Democratic Unionist Party, may I first of all pay my respects and give condolences to our SDLP colleagues. And uh, they will forgive me if my thoughts are principally today with Seamus's family, of course, with Orla and her husband Mark and their daughter Lara, and of course, Seamus's sisters and the wider family. I want to pay tribute to Seamus uh, as a fellow member of a small band of politicians who have headed the shared office of OFM DFM, uh, which is now the executive office, and recognise its distinct and unique challenges. As well as being Northern Ireland's original Deputy First Minister, Seamus Malm was also a Member of Parliament for 19 years and his party's Deputy Leader for 22 years. And the climate he had to operate in, of course, was very different to the one we operate in today. No social media, less 24-hour news, but decades of murder and mayhem that thankfully we no longer have to deal with to anywhere near the same extent. Seen by many in unionism as a more typical Irish nationalist than his long-term partner leading the SDLP, John Hume, but yet perhaps viewed as more pragmatic and with a better understanding of unionists. That may be as a result of the fact that he lived in Market Hill with his unionist neighbours at every turn. And he was a fierce critic of violence, something which is much easier from the armchairs of BT9 or the south side of Dublin or the shires of England. But Seamus Mallon had to walk daily amongst the gunmen and bombers he was calling out and go back onto the streets of Newry and along the border to attend to his constituents and campaign and seek votes for himself and his party colleagues. He saw council colleagues in Armagh, who sat within the same chamber as him, murdered. And he sought to attend every funeral of those in his constituency who died in the Troubles, sometimes when he was far from welcome. And he recognised that nationalism needed to have confidence in and support policing. He didn't mince his words about the feelings he saw, often to the frustration of many hard-working uh, professional police officers. Seamus Mallon, who had an interest in plays and amateur dramatics, became a commanding orator with a presence in the chamber, an effective communicator valued by journalists for his quips and one-liners, and of course a key negotiator for the SDLP. He could be thran, but he could also be very thoughtful. He was committed to his local area and where he has been brought up as reflected in his recent memoir published last year, and it contains much of his experience, but does not dwell in the past, but offers insights and advice for the future. Whilst 100% in favour of Irish unity, he knew it couldn't be forced upon people and the consequences that come from wafer-thin majorities. He saw the outworkings of a close Brexit vote and the polarising effect that that had here and in Great Britain. To make a success of constitutional change would require sufficient consensus. During his maiden speech, which Nicola has already referenced in the House of Commons, he described the two cathedrals of the Protestant Church and the Catholic Church. They look across at each other in the city of Armagh, just as the bells tolled in the new year, I saw the obscenity of two policemen being blown to smithereens. We have two stark and clear choices. We can live together in generosity and compassion, or we can continue to die in bitter disharmony. Are we to move into the new century with a millstone of blood, as it were, hanging around our necks, with a millstone of division and sectarian bickering, with the daily catalogue of threats of violence and death, or are we to create a new vision for a new century on the basis of agreement and reconciliation? In closing, Seamus made clear he would pursue his objectives by peaceful, democratic, constitutional and political means on the floor of the House or on the floor of whatever other form is available to me, and in such a way that will not cost one drop of blood and will not remove anyone's self-respect from him. Now, some of those questions and challenges as from Seamus' maiden speech in 1986 remain unfulfilled today. The restoration of a Northern Ireland government and fully functioning institutions provide us with the opportunity 
to address them. Northern Ireland and its leaders must carry forward that vision, building a shared society where everyone has a stake and feels at home and working together in the interests of all our people. Finally, Mr Speaker, on the day we pay tributes and remember Seamus Mallon, I also want to acknowledge that this is the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau. And in that camp alone, one million Jews were put to death because of their faith, six million Jews killed overall. The scale of that hideous extermination must always be remembered on this Holocaust Rem Remembrance Day. And I stand with the Jewish people across the world as they face ongoing anti-Semitic abuse today. And I remember the horror of the Holocaust. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.